Ladies and gentlemen, how the devil are we all doing? It's, well, tasty new gag this week, apparently. Thank you very much as ever, Discord. Welcome to this week's Top 5 Camps. As ever, guys, we've got some of the best player-built camps in Fallout 76 to show you. So sit back, relax, and get ready to see some true masochism. In the number 5 spot this week, we have Yeah Bear with the Satellite Waff build. And guys, I don't know what it is, but this location seems to be very buddy popular at the moment. Honestly, I've seen a multitude of buddy builds here. Now they've all ranged from different styles and different themes, but Bear, I, th I think you've nailed it with this one. It's just so bloody, well clean let me tell you building up here is no easy feat you can't be using floors you have to replace them with roof pieces which is a challenge in its own right the shape is really difficult to do as well again you can't just put it down in any old fashion you need to use blueprints but i think the thing that stands out most to me is just how well it fits inside the satellite dish it's the same with the laboratory build last week despite all the technical difficulties and limitations that you have building on such a structure you, you've absolutely smashed it bear Aye, exterior wise, 10 out of 10 on this one. The interior matches to the exterior almost perfectly. You know, it's very clean, it's very minimalistic, and that kitchen, you've done a bloody fantastic job on that. It's nice to see different items being used for the counters. I think they are the Enclave computers, but I could be wrong. <laughs> I have been in past. Absolutely brilliant work. Thank you very much for entering this week, and congratulations on the number 5 spot. Very well deserved indeed. Now then guys, just before we go any further, I want to make you aware that your judge this week is Lady H. She's an absolutely fantastic builder, some of the stuff she comes out with is, ah, oh, it's incredible. And believe it or not guys, Lady H is the only known person in the world to free climb Mount Everest in 26 minutes flat. Yeah, it's a true story. Guys, she's done a fantastic job of judging this week. If you could head over to her channel and show her some love, I'm sure she'd appreciate it. The link's down in the description. Anyhow, back to the top five. And in the number four spot this week, we have Havoc with the Junkyard Camp. And again, this is another fantastic location that I am seeing more people using. And trust me, if you like immersive and junky builds, this spot will, you know, it'll suit you down to the ground, as demonstrated here by Havoc's build. Just have a look at how low friendly that is. It does look like something you'd find in the wasteland. It's scrappy, it's thrown together, it looks rough, and yeah, we, we like that. Now, believe it or not, while this area is a really good place to build in for this kind of camp, it is quite difficult to build here. There's not much space knocking about. And that's quite simply because, if you hadn't guessed it, it is a pre-war junkyard. So, trying to get foundations down over some of the shit that's buried in the ground, yeah, it's quite difficult. But Avok, it doesn't look like that's caused you an issue. You managed to get a decent sized structure down and it looks absolutely fantastic. Personally, I love the container that you've got up there. It fits in really well with the build and it does break up the materials you've used as well. A nice dash of colour never hurt anything, did it? Well, it may have done him, you know, warfare if you were wearing bright red. Anyway, I digress. This camp is incredible, Havoc. You've done a really, really nice job with it. Like I say, it's a good location, but a difficult location. But you've absolutely smashed it. I think you've done well matching in the stuff that you've created with the stuff that was already existing. Aye, top marks. Thank you very much for entering this week, and congratulations on the number four spot. Very well deserved. Coming in at number three, we have Goldfinger76 with the, <laughs> the Jurassic Park camp. I love it. You know, when the Wavy Willis water slides came out, I thought, how can Bethesda make something more strange and weird to put in a wasteland? But, yeah, they've done it. Just wondering how many drugs were consumed when this were brought to drawing table. Anyway, back to the camp. Goldfinger, I absolutely love this, pal. I mean, it's a theme build, and you know I've got a thing for them. But above all else, it's fun, isn't it? You know, imagine walking through the wasteland and coming across this bloody thing. It, it, it brightened your day up, won't it? And not only that, guys, it's actually really well put together. Your use of prefabs is absolutely spot on. Like I said in last week's video, you don't see very many people using them. And it's a shame, to be honest with you. Yes, they can be good for standalone camps, but the way Goldfinger's used them here as like little added bits, yeah, it, it works really well. The main structure itself as well is quite complicated. You know, we've got that semicircle going down. Mm-hmm, simply, simply lovely. I do like that. But I think the pièce de résistance, as the, um, who says it, the Spanish say it, yeah, we'll go with that, is the helicopter pad. It's a nice little touch, I'm not going to lie to you. 
Now, the interior is just as well put together as the exterior. You know, I'm getting research lab kind of vibes out of it. I'm expecting to see a velociraptor jump out from nowhere like... Or, or, or what, whatever they do. It's, it's something like that. I need help. Goldfinger, my friend, you've done tremendous work with this one, pal. Like I said before, the, the giant dinosaurs are a ridiculous <laughs> addition to the game, to put it frankly. But they're also bloody fun as well, and you've made excellent use of them for this camp, bud. The build was bloody brilliant. The filming was also very well done. And above all else, you've put a smile on my face, and I'm sure you put a smile on many other viewers' faces as well. Thank you very much for entering this week, mate, and congratulations on the number three spot. Hats off to you, meat. Right then, so how are you liking the camp so far? As ever, I think they're bloody fantastic. But I'm guessing there's some of you in the comments thinking, you know what, I could do better than that. Well, that, that may be true. However, I don't know, do I? I'm not a mime reader. I need to see them. And the only way for that to happen, mon petit fleurs, is to go down in the description of this video, click on the Discord link, and you'll see the weekly submissions section. It's that simple. Now, as a side note, I know it's difficult and quite unnerving submitting your camp builds, and I mean that genuinely. So I'm also going to include two links to two separate videos with tips on how to film your camps. One is from Moonlight Cowboy, and the other's from Nina Alabaster. They're extremely informative, and they will help you to, you know, get on your way filming your own camps. Anyhow, back to the top five. In the number two spot this week, we have Slog with the Ashy Foundry Camp. And guys, if you like theme builds, yeah, this one's got to be right up your street. On the exterior, we've got a really industrial, pre-war looking kind of factory vibe going down. And the location, Jesus Christ, it fits this build down to a T. Now, I know the Ash Heap may not be the first go-to location for most camp builds. It's quite a, you know, undesirable region. But if you want to do an industrial kind of build or factory build, guys, there's nowhere better. Trust me on that one. Now then, while the exterior is pretty cool on this build, the interior is where it really comes alive. To me, it feels like some kind of post-war munitions factory that a group of raiders have thrown together. Kind of like the Corvega plant in Fallout 4. Now, yes, I know that wasn't a munitions factory, but you get what I'm saying, don't you? No? Well, that's absolutely fine. Slog, I love the interior on this one, pal. All the flames you've got placed around, it really adds to the lighting. And obviously, it also adds to the foundry kind of feel as well. Another thing I really enjoy about this camp and all is the Blood Eagle totems. Now, yes, they do look cool, but the sound effects they give off? Ah, mate, it sounds like you're stepping into a bloody blast furnace. You know what? Bellows going and all of that. Yeah, it's a really nice touch, bud. Slog, brilliant work on this one, pal. I love the theme behind it. I love how immersive it is. And above all else, I love the location as well. Thank you very much for entering this week, buddy. And congratulations on the number two spot. Very well deserved indeed. Right then, so now we come to the number one spot. And who do you think's got it this week? I think there's been around 25 submissions. Yeah, it's been a tough one. Unfortunately though, there can only be one winner. And I'm going to have to keep you waiting for just a little bit longer before I tell you who it is. Because it's time for the honourable mention section. Yes, and this week we've got two of them. The first honourable mention goes to Olmwy Side with the Morgantown Estate, and mate, this is absolutely gorgeous. I think my favourite part about the exterior is that entrance where you've got going on there. That is absolutely fantastic. Brilliant use of the stone walls there, my friend. The interior is just as elegant as well. It looks like some rich guy's mansion. That kitchen, I must say, is fantastically done. The entertainment system you've got on the wall, again, beautifully executed. And overall, pal, yeah, brilliant work on this one, Mon. Congratulations on the honourable mention, and thank you very much for showing us this. Now, the second honourable mention of the week goes to Nuka Cola Man with the Mr. Fuzzy Robot. I mean, wow, well, there's been some work gone into this, haven't there? Aye, of course there has. And you know what? The strange thing about it, it is actually built in Adventure Mode as well. I know, I know, I was just as surprised as you what no doubt are. Nuka Cola Man, personally, this was one of my favourite builds of the week, and I can see how you've done some of the bits, but I'm not even going to try and work out how you've done the majority of it. Far too complicated for me. Nuka Cola Man, thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on the honourable mention, and wow, what an absolutely fantastic build.
Right then, so now we come back to the number one spot. And I think it's about time I told you who it is, isn't it? Aye, of course it is. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the winner this week is Hitbit with this incredible late side camper van. Now, guys, Hitbit is one of the best vehicle builders in the entire community. Honestly, some of the stuff this man's put together is absolutely mind-blowing, and this van is no different. The amount of time that must have taken, God, I, I can't even begin to imagine. Now, unlike most of your builds it bit, I can kind of work out how you've done this one, and yeah, it looks like it would have been a proper kick in the penis to achieve. Those bar pieces in particular, they are not easy to work with, let me tell you viewers. Once upon a time, you could just stack them on top of each other, and yeah, that'd be it, job done. But now, it's an absolute ball ache to get them to, well, float and sit on top of each other like that. And that's not the only tricky work that's gone into this either. Just look at the steps going inside of it, how you've got the stash boxes at different heights. And how the window frames have been made by using the fence posts. Yeah, this is some real ingenuity going down here. Honestly, th this is absolutely bloody mind-blowing. Now, this masterpiece doesn't stop with the exterior. Oh, no. The inside of it is just as well put together. And just as bloody complicated as well by the looks of it. The way everything just fits so well, and yeah, it does look like a buddy camper, guys. Aye, everything about this build is buddy next level. This really is raising the bar. Now, on top of the camper van itself, Hitbit has put down some extra little bits around it to make it look like a campsite. I like that. And even the videoing of the build was really well done, too. All in all, Hitbit, this build is absolutely spectacular. It just goes to show what can be done with a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, and above all else, a little bit of ingenuity. Thank you very much for sharing this build with us and congratulations on the number one spot. Very well deserved indeed. And a massive thank you to every single person that entered the competition this week. Even if you didn't get in, I know it's disappointing, but just remember you are keeping the camp building community alive. So thank you all so much for that. I'd also like to say a massive thank you to Lady H for judging this week. It mustn't have been easy, but I think you've done a fantastic job. As I mentioned before, guys, if you could go over to her channel, show her some love, I'm sure she'd really appreciate it. As ever, I'd like to say a massive thank you to all my Patreons and channel members. There's a link down in the description if that's something you're interested in, as well as a link to all my other socials as well. Anyhow, as we say, I love you and leave you, and I'll catch you next one. Have fun, everybody.